Today's video, we're going to see if we can get this running. This is a 1930s to 1940s Wells engine. This engine's built like it's made of glass and could break at any moment. And in today's video, we're going to see if we can get it running as well as explain why it's so brittle. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get right into it. Ever since I learned about these engines, I've always kind of wanted one as they have a very unique manufacturing design. And last year I found this one at a decent price out in Pennsylvania and brought it home. This engine looks like it's in pretty nice shape overall and I don't think there's anything broken on it. The only thing missing on it is the original 6 volt generator unit. This engine would have been originally to charge 6 volt batteries for cars and things. I think this will be a pretty easy revival today and by the end of it I think we'll have a really nice product. I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any questions or anything you want to say, please consider leaving a comment as it helps the channel grow. I appreciate looking at them and I respond to as many as I can. This, fly, this whole flywheel cover and shroud is die cast. That's cool. I don't think I've ever seen an engine with a die cast shroud before. So I got the whole thing taken apart. Nothing looks severely bad or anything, but I do want to explain to you guys why I said this engine is made like glass and is very brittle and delicate. This engine is made out of pot metal. Now pot metal is die cast technically, and technically it's a zinc alloy. But what makes this interesting is this is pot metal that's old enough that it can have something that's properly known as zinc pest, which is very bad. What a lot of old engine guys like me would call it is just the pot metal has swelled up and disintegrated. And with this engine, it hasn't done it, but I do have some examples that I wanna show you guys to show you what this engine could have done. 
So I have a couple mags here with some mild pop metal problems. This is a Sumpner Model 12 off of some sort of Fairbanks. And then I also have this RV1 mag housing, which is also a Fairbanks engine mag. And when pop metal does this, it becomes very brittle. And just with a little bit of elbow grease, you can take it and break it. I don't think you want a material this brittle making your engine block. Because you can just grab it, break it apart, and it's junk. It's just junk. This was a common problem with zinc alloys. And now I have a giant mess of metal crumbs. With this engine as it sits, this block right here is pot metal. This back plate is pot metal. This shroud is pot metal. And this flywheel might be, but that also might be aluminum. I'm not quite sure on that one. All those things are pot metal, as well as the breather, carburetor, and stuff like that is all pot metal in this engine. If done right, it can last a really long time with no major side effects, and if done wrong, it can lead to catastrophic failure beyond your wireless dreams. This engine is still, even if the material is in good shape, for how small and thin they made it, delicate. And then you add the fact the material, if it is the right batch of it, it could destroy itself just with age. None of the major components have any zinc pest or swelling happening to them, but there is one part on this engine made out of the same material as almost everything else in it that actually did get some in it. That being right here in this crankshaft there's a governor collar right here this little governor collar right here this has zinc pest in it it's all broken up and chipped away somebody already removed the governor off this thing a long time ago externally this piece has cracks in it just like any typical swelled up pot metal does and it's the only piece in this engine that did it which means when they were doing this back in the day, they had some really clean material they were working with. They didn't have any impurities in it, and they did a good job for the most part. Another thing I want to mention about this engine, it is, is very much ahead of its time because this thing has a die cast block. And now any engine you see at all now, I'm pretty sure even some modern car engines are, all small engines you see nowadays are die cast. Like they started doing die cast in full swing in about the 1950s was when it just started taking off. And after after that it became the most popular way to make a small engine. Reason was is there wasn't any good modern technologies for it. But this right here shows at least somebody was trying before that point. Now that we got it all the way torn down, it's time to start cleaning things up. I'm going to start with the pot metal pieces and work with the cast iron ones after that. With all the pot metal pieces, I think I'm going to take them all down to bare metal, buff them lightly with the wire wheel and some elbow grease, and I think they'll turn out pretty nice. With the cast iron pieces, I'm going to do about the same thing, take them to the wire wheel. I'm not shooting for a full removal of the rust and paint. I'm just shooting to give them a bit of a shine and give them the nice patina that I'm looking for. Now we can move on to reassembly and see if this thing will run. Let's hope the pot metal doesn't crack and explode while we try.
Now that we got the engine cleaned up and put back together, let's hope it runs as good as it looks. I like the look that it has. It kind of shows all the pot metal and uniqueness of the engine. Let's go see how well it runs. All right, we've got everything back together. I think it has a nice bit of character to it. And with it not being painted, you can tell that this engine's different from any other engine. And it's kind of unusual being made out of pot metal like that. So this shows that off real nice. With that being said, let's see if we can get this thing to fire up. We put oil in it, we put gas in it, and let's see if it'll actually do something. I gotta go hook a six volt battery up to it because the way this thing's ignition works is it would have used power off of the battery it was charging to actually run. So there's no actual magnets on the flywheel to run the electric electricity. Got some pops out of it. It appears that it will run. I guess it's done. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't, I don't think you would have made it this far. If you want to see more old engine related content like this, please consider subscribing. If you have anything you want to know, please leave a comment down below. Or if you have anything you do know, please also leave a comment down below. And with that all being said, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.